Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Raid Shadow Legends, and we are back on the test server. This is the next episode, episode 3 of my 10 poll challenge. We're having some fun with some rares and seeing what we can do. Now, if you watched my last video, I did some dragon. That video took longer than I expected because the runs were a bit slow. Maybe I should have just sped up the runs. Maybe I'll do that with Ice Skull. Maybe I'll get rid of myself and let the runs speed up and just talk about the result and show the champions. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take my original team. This one was from Dragon. We're going to get rid of Tree Fowler. She's not doing much. I mean, to be fair, the poisons, uh, that's debatable, right? The poisons could be really helpful here. Um... Although I need more protection in this team and this is going to be a bit hard to do damage. So I think I'm going to stick to just, <laughs> well, the right affinity for one. Because uh, uh, she does have this extra poisons here, but we do have her in a toxic set, so that could land regardless. But I don't know, like this is going to be the debate, right? This is the debate. This is the debate <laughs> as I talk it out. We have a lot of force people going against spirit right now. So I actually have Myrmidon here. Myrmidon is here and they are going to help keep the rest of the team alive. I've got them built pretty well. So let's see here. We have our round one already set up. I'm going to leave in Roughstone and see what happens for helping clear the waves. Um, hopefully he can help a little bit too. I did not worry about any crit rate on this character though. I'm trying to avoid the extra smashes as much as possible and just let them kind of slowly do damage. I don't know. It's going to be hard. This Ice Golem one is going to be hard. I really do need the poisons. I might need to swap in someone else that's besides Tree Fowler in a Toxic set. That's something to try too. But we're going to see what happens with this. And yeah, we're going to set some AI. So uh, I am okay with the decrease attack being used. That's fine. We can open that. But let's not even bother using this. Actually, maybe we need this too. You know what? Let's open with the... Ally protect this round, and then don't use it again. Next round, let's just not use this. Ugh, but the, the hard part is those reflect damage. We really need some block buffs, and hopefully Uko can land those even though they're the wrong affinity. Oh god. Oh god. We'll see how this works. <laughs> but I'm going to go into round two. Round two, we have our AI already set from before, and I think I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to, I'm trying to think, what do we want to start off round three with? Probably protection. Um, but we can do protection in the form of decrease accuracy attack first, and then oh, open with that, <laughs> and then it'll go to this. So I think we're going to have to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll get some smashes first, and then we will heal from the smashes with the continuous heal. So that, that actually makes more sense. So I think what I'll do, because I know I want to start off with that, we can lead with that, but then not use it again. Makes sense, right? So we do have him fully booked. It's not too bad. It's a four turn cooldown here, a three turn cooldown for this decrease attack. Hopefully he'll be a little bit helpful. I'm a little bit worried about the damage. I am relying on smashes and you know how that goes with Ice Golem. It gets a bit messy, but we're going to give it a try. Let's do the run and then we'll, ch we'll talk. <laughs>
All right, and we're back. As you can see, that was slow. <laughs> uh, we didn't exactly do a ton of damage. Actually, you can see here, Uko did decent damage with the smite, but it only did so much. Um, Rough Stone, War Maiden, and Uko were all bad affinity for this, so this made this a slow battle. But you can see, because the adds are void uh, with the Ice Golem, we actually killed them pretty quickly. But the Ice Golem himself, we got a lot of weak hits, and I don't have my one strong affinity built to do damage because I wanted him there for protection. But if you watch the run, you can see how important that ally protect really was. Like, I have masteries to go along with that as well. But let's take a look at the higher levels of Ice Golem. I feel like I have no chance. <laughs> but we do have some strong affinities here so maybe we just give this a try see what happens if it fails i'll cut it and then we will just go show you the builds but yeah i think it was kind of fun to showcase what some rares can do even if it's a little bit slow which is usually the case with a traditional ice golem team if you don't have a strong poisoner to do the majority of the damage to ice golem it kind of just takes forever so it is what it is, or if you have too much damage, I should say, you smash too hard and everyone just dies from all the extra big Ice Golem uh, passive smashes, so we don't want that. But yeah, let's let's take a look at Ice Golem 25. Let's see what happens. I'll speed this run up too, and then we will look at all of their builds and I'll show you masteries and all that fun stuff. back <laughs> that took forever and was a little bit scary wasn't it <laughs> but hey look at this damage so of course we actually got more smite damage because of the boss's higher level two million damage from mighty uko hey not so bad for a new blessing right it's a one star little blessing that i have on uko but yep yeah, so this was a little bit risky but again we're just showcasing how important gear 
the right gear is and a wonderful champion like Uko and how big of an impact they can make when paired with some pretty mediocre, if not terrible champions. I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not great. That's for sure. And if this is the first, I realized if this is your first video you're watching from my 10 poll challenge, I think I said it, but go watch the first video or where I explain the challenge and I pull the champions and it gives a little bit more context. But in case you're watching this video before the dragon one, I'm going to showcase my champions so you can see what's up. So first off, we have my leader here, Hexweaver. She's a beast for healing and for support. I have her in a curing set, guys. Yes, a curing set. Now, when it comes to someone that is that has a skill for healing based on their HP, it's almost always better to go full immortal. Don't go curing. But her heal is actually based on their max HP, the ally's max HP. And when we're dealing with these low rares, they don't have that great of HP, let's be honest. So, then we're not dealing with a very HP focused, we're dealing with attack squishy champions. So, put a curing, putting a curing set on her makes her heals a lot better. So that's why I have that. She's also great for the increased crit rate and increased speed buff because I have her always going first in the rounds uh, and in the rotation in general. I actually have built everyone with lower crit rate because she compensates for that. So she also has a speed or uh, infection crypts, but we're not using that. We're using Ukos. But let me show you masteries here. This is all support, kind of like how you would deal with someone like an arena healer or maybe a full on Hydra healer as well. So again, curing set and I have full refresh accessories on her just for chances to be able to heal as much as possible. So we have her with solid HP, 58,000, which is not great for something like higher end Ice Golem. Plus she was the wrong affinity, so that was a bit hard, but it ended up working out okay in the end, <laughs> sort of. 2,500 defense, 200 speed. She's my fastest. Everything I did for this 10 pull challenge and that I'm continuing to do is only with Dungeons 20 in mind. All of the stats that I did as far as accuracy, resistance, and speed were with 20 in mind so i did want to be able to lap people and have a chance to go twice to the bosses once so i did want to get people at 200 or so uh and which actually worked out pretty well because then they're solid for doing uh 25 stages as well but obviously this ice golem isn't exactly efficient no speed run glory <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is what it is with ice golem my dragon run was actually quite more impressive than i expected i did it way faster than I thought I was going to do for stage 20, and I was able to do 25 as well. So you can, obviously if I can do Ice Golem 25, I could probably do Dragon 25 as well, and that was the case. We used a little bit different champions like I should, but you can go check that video for that. So I did put some resistance on her as well, seeing as though she's the healer and I want to make sure she, she stayed alive. I didn't want to get lots of debuffs thrown at her. So next up in the lineup, I have Decreased Defense with War Maiden. She is in a lethal set. Crit rate plus ignore defense and cruel and increased attack there. I do have her with some revenge accessories, especially for sake of dragon and ice golem. Chances to place poison more often is definitely helpful. She, of course, is our AoE decreased defense champion. You want to prioritize that to start off the run so you can help everyone else do more damage. So we have her. I guess I'm just going to leave the masteries over here. Same thing, typical Warmaster boss masteries. We want those Warmaster procs. And yeah, she can smack. And I have her at 196 speed. 71% crit damage because our crit rate because that's all we need considering my um, buff from Hexweaver. 256% crit damage so she can smack with that lovely gear. I do have enough accuracy for stage 20. It gets a little, little bit closer <laughs> into not landing up. Well, gets a little bit closer to being resisted in higher levels, but it's all right. And we had a little bit, uh, I mean, not really. Her survivability kind of sucks on her, which is why she dies a lot. Her attack is not crazy. I only have 3,700 attack on her. So if you're talking about, oh, if anyone is worried about my gear, I don't have crazy OP gear on her. I d none of my stats on any of these builds are insane. So, I mean, there's one that's pretty good for rough stone, but I will show that. But still, 3,700 attack on her is not insane at all. 250 crit damage is solid in a lethal set, but which is the same as Savage, but you know. Still not 
anything astronomically insane. So we do have Mighty Uko, who I was able to put in a brimstone, <laughs> which is really, really helpful for, to get that smite out there for bosses. Uh, Uko's awesome. We got, decrease, we got block buffs, decrease accuracy, decrease attack in an AoE, a revive and block damage, and increased speed, and all of that came in clutch. You can see how often she had to, or he had to revive in some of that content so far. Uh, we have Uko in a shield set because they were my champion with the highest HP, the easiest to build up, 70,000 HP. They have a good base HP, so I figured putting them in a set that actually helps the whole team survive is more important. Uh, and I didn't really worry about crit rate perfectly, but I did actually get 68%. Should probably increase that by 2% so we'd always crit, but that's all right. Uh, resistance, I did want to be able to resist some debuffs, so we have a little bit of resistance there and enough accuracy to land everything for all the stage 20s at the very least. Uh, and then here we have our War Master Masteries and similar masteries like I would use for Hydra, honestly. And then next up we have our Damage Dealer. <laughs> don't laugh, we have Rough Stone. So Rough Stone is nice to build because you don't need to worry about accuracy. They do have, um, actually no, there's nothing that needs accuracy. Ignores defense on this single target hit, chance for an extra turn, decrease max HP, that's not really gonna come into play, and just an AoE on the A1. Now the multiplier is not crazy for this, but still, we might have put some strong savage gear on Rough Stone because why not? Why the hell not? I also did, did try to grab whatever refresh I had, which was only one, because of being able to do those other, the A1 and the A2 against the boss hit harder. So if, or sorry, the A2 and the A3 hit harder. So if we could use those single target hits more often, that would have been nice. But he smacks, so he's got 4200 attack. He definitely hits hard. Um, 273% crit damage in Savage. Now that's a solid build, but it's not really that crazy considering we don't need to worry about accuracy. I also chose not to worry about resistance, so I really could boost that number. So he's my main damage dealer. You'll see, if you look at how fast he actually takes out the adds, he's putting up some good damage, especially for just being a random rare, right? Uh, and the I guess our key for this one... The one we subbed out was Myrmidon. Uh, he's really good for protection. He's defense-based, so his stats are solid. I was able to get him 4,300 defense, 42,000 HP. Enough speed to kind of go in the middle of that rotation there. I didn't worry about crit rate at all, although I probably should have seen this. He was a strong affinity for spirit with stage 20 ice golem. Uh, I did get a little resist on him as well. He is a support champion. I would like him to resist some things. And uh, accuracy is just barely enough to land. I probably should have glyphed more of that. Stage 25 might have gotten a little bit risky. I actually did not even put a blessing on him because I could not see a single blessing that was actually going to help him in this situation, unfortunately. Like, maybe one of these blocking debuffs, depending on who was in the waves or which boss we were fighting, that's about it. But... I really couldn't see it making that much of a difference. Um, I guess if he was frozen, but I don't think he got frozen. I think I had enough resistance. I, I guess I'd have to look again. But I think at least when it came to stage 20, I don't think I had to worry about the freezes. So that wasn't too bad. So I have him with full support masteries right now, going down to bulwark to kind of absorb damage from the allies. And then uh, same thing, he's wearing a guardian set as well to be able to absorb damage the allies and heals at by 10% every turn. So that is a solid, solid set. He has the ally protect and continuous heal and that's why I used him. I also could have used his aura for defense in dungeons, but because I built speed so a little slow on a couple champions, I stuck to my um, other aura there, but it's all right. <laughs> it worked out okay. We were just trying to see what fun we can have with some random rares that I was stuck with using compared to others and none of it makes sense it's completely random i guess in hindsight for stage 25 i maybe could have put tree feller in and maybe taken my main damage dealer out rough stone or taken even war maiden out i don't know i could have swapped out one of these two for tree feller because i have them in a toxic set and that might have been nice to get more damage to the boss but in the end we still did it not with Decent gear with terrible and a mix of mediocre champions with the mighty Uko being amazing support with this incredible 
block damage revive here. Whew, I love this champion already. But yeah, that's been my video for Ice Golem. This is episode three. Be sure to go watch the other videos. We're going to try to tackle Fire Knight and Spider. I have no idea what success we're going to have with those. That one is a bit more risky. I don't have many multi-hits for Fire Knight. And I definitely don't have turn meter control uh, for Fire Knight or Spider. So we might not quite make it as far. But Dragon 20 was except extra fun. We'll see how this one goes. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy something fun like this. Seeing what we can do with some random champions. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.